All right, people, Catfish Dave here. I'm experiencing a little downtime having to do some maintenance and do some stuff. I figured this would be a good time to show my gear, show my boat, uh, what I'm using, why I'm using it. First, I'll give you a quick look at my boat. You can see the mud streak going down it. I washed that off a couple months ago. It comes back. It's just a 16 and a half foot Alumacraft, 50 horse Yamaha. I believe it's an F-50 four-stroke, very quiet. Um, I'm running two fish finders there. I got the Low Rance uh, Elite. That's a Garmin, I don't know. I can't remember, 94 something, 96 something, I don't know. But either way, uh, I started having GPS issues with the Low Rance, so I bought the Garmin. I didn't like the side scan on the Garmin near as well as the low ramps. Uh, and that was mainly due to the transducer that came with it. I didn't find out till after I bought it that I got the junky transducer. But uh, either way, I've got two units now that'll do everything. Uh, these are my multi bars, holding a Smackdown rod holders, aircraft grade aluminum. This stuff was not cheap. I'll just tell you uh, this setup right here is going to cost you i believe it cost me over 500 dollars for that uh, the thing about it is it will pivot in out any way you want higher lower i see some guys point these way out here i don't know why uh, i don't want to have to bend over to grab my rods but those are very versatile you can get those at a uh, smackdown catfishing these multi bars uh, i believe mad cats carries these there's a number of people that carry the multi bar Smackdown rod holders you do have to get from Smackdown rod holders and I've got a couple Smackdowns on the side up here one over there uh, if I was going to suspend four rods I am running just a mini Coda power drive it's just a you have to deploy it yourself it's about a $1,500 unit it has iPilot and spot lock I can record a course up to two miles with that and uh, that trolling motor will do all the work, and that's what I use when I'm dragging. A couple of coolers in there, one for bait, one for me. Anchor from Cat River Anchor, if I ever need one. Uh, that's a combination net I got. It's a Ranger net handle and a locking net, actual net. Just kind of put two things together there because I broke my old net. Uh, that's basically it. You know, a little six gallon tank. This boat will run about 30 miles an hour, top speed, and uh, it's light enough that I can pull it with this little Ford Explorer. So uh, I like the fact that it's light. I can travel light, don't spend a lot of fuel. Uh, the fact it's tiller just gives me a lot of floor space. You know, my camera usually goes up here. I took that seat out. But I have a lot more walk around space in this boat. My other boat was a center console. So this boat is more video friendly and uh, it's good enough for what I do. As far as my rods and reels, uh, there's some of them, I've got a lot more, but uh, say I take a trip to Alabama, uh, big lakes, big dams, big catfish. I'll take 10 rods with me. Uh, I'll have four. Dragon rods in the boat. These are my dragon rods. These are from Chasing Cat Outdoors. Um, actually, these dragon weights are from Chasing Cat Outdoors. My other dragon rod. Um, I drag with those rods. They have a fairly soft tip. And because I like dragging with braid, there are advantages to dragging with braid. For one, you've got a lot of line out. When you drag, uh, the braid has less drag. And when you're that far of a distance from the fish, it's gonna allow for quicker hook sets. So I prefer braid when I drag. So I have, for a dragon rig, I have the Chasing Cat Rod. I have the uh, Shimano Takoda 500, 80 pound diamond braid. That's my dragon setup. When I'm suspend baiting, I like a much stouter rod, so uh, I've got these right here. 
toughest freaking rods, Big Fish Energy Series. I recently landed a 70 pound class fish about three or four videos ago with these rods. I use these just for uh, suspend baiting. I want a stout tip uh, and a lot of backbone. Try to get them loose here. But yeah, I suspend bait, you know, uh, just about a foot and a half a liter there, eight ounce sinker, typical suspending rig. I've got, because these rods are so light, these are all carbon. I didn't want to put a bulky reel on them, heavy reel. So I've got these big Akuma Komodos, uh, 50 pound monster monofilament on the TFR rods. I may do some anchor fishing in currents. So I've got several rods already set up for that. I'm using these uh, Mad Cat carbines. Uh, I just pulled a 60 pound fish on these a couple videos ago. Uh, basically I set up on some structure and was in some pretty good current threw those rods out on either side of that structure. I got a 40 pound fish and a 60 pound fish in just about 10 minutes of sitting on that spot. In case there's a lot of current below the dams, I will carry a very light bumping rod. Uh, this here is the newest chasing cat. Same thing as my other ones that I drag with. Only this newest version he's got is a little different colored. Uh, it has orange glow in the dark wrapped and uh, this white part will glow green under a black light. All these rods glow under black lights very well. The TFRs, the Mad Cats, and this newer Chasing Cat rod glows very well under black light. This is a, a Dragon rig right here. I got my braid to three-way swivel, Dragon weight. I've got a couple feet of 80-pound Mamoy Diamond tied to a demon dragon. Give it about another eight inches of line there. And I have this big circle hook. That's my dragon rigs. My anchor fishing is a, almost a similar setup, but I've got two barrel swivels with some 80 pound in between there. And then I have a sinker slide where I can change out different sizes of weights. The reason I have these two swivels on there and the weight in between is that kind of keeps the weight in one spot. When you're spot locking, this boat can drift a little bit on you, but it's very similar to the Dragon Rig, has the float, has another hook past the float. I could use these anchor rods just the way they're set up for dragging. Uh, I simply just pull that weight up there and attach a dragon weight, and I could drag with these anchor rods that I have. The TFR rod is the only rod that I have that I would bump with. It's the only rod that's light enough. They're the only rods I have that are true carbon. All these other rods, the Mad Cats, the Chasing Cats, are a composite blank, which means a mixture of glass and graphite or glass and carbon. They're lighter weight than a traditional glass rod. They have more backbone than a traditional glass rod. So all my rods are either composite blank or carbon. I don't like all glass, so too flimsy for me. There's the hooks I use right there. Um, this one here is called a Boss Cat. It's 10 aught. Uh, you can get those at uh, Tackle Bandit. Same place I get my Demon Dragon Spooks. And this one here is called a Dell's 12. You get those from Dell's Tackle. And he's also got uh, other stuff too. I believe he even carries these multi bars and carries demon dragons as well. But uh, yeah, that's the two hooks I run. Uh, the only down thing about these hooks uh, is they are cheaper Chinese hooks. You have to watch the tips on them. A lot of times I bend them, pulling them out of a fish's mouth. So uh, I keep this right here, this hook sharpener. I bought this uh, from Tackle Direct. Sharpen hooks however you do it. Some people just carry a file with them. But I got that from Tackle Direct because those cheaper bulk Chinese hooks, uh, they do need to check the points on them. 
Uh, as far as rating all these rods, Mad Cat's carving rod, uh, it is a big fish rod. It has a very stout tip. It takes quite a bit to bend them. Uh, they can be used for anchor fishing, suspend fishing. They're a little too heavy for the bumping. Uh, but they are stout. The chasing cat rods uh, that I use for dragging could be used for anchor fishing, could be used for suspending. All these rods I've got could be used for just about any style of fishing. I would only bump with the TFR because it's the lightest rod here. Uh, my two favorite for suspend baiting large fish would be these Mad Cats and these TFRs because of the stouter tip, the more backbone. When I'm doing my dragon, uh, you see me using these planer boards. These are spreadums. Uh, these things here, you can step on them and just mash that completely down like that and uh, bend it right back into place. You know, no big deal. Ready to go again. Spread them planer boards. Good board. There's old black pearl cast net. I use that for shallower water. I tore up my tape net for deep water, so. I just use an old Phytech uh, Pro Series 10 foot tape net on my deep water shed. As far as catching skipjack, I take a minimum of two rods with me. I'll have one for a Foley spoon. I've got several feet of probably 30 pound fluorocarbon on there. That's about a three quarter ounce to one ounce weight. I've got this on a little Daiwa Tatula with 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon mainline. And then I carry one rod for skipjack in case they're hitting flies like that. There's basically a homemade sabiki rig or you can use a sabiki rig. Uh, this is actually a chasing jacks rod from Chasing Cat Outdoors. I've been using it on my skipjacks. Little Abo Revo reel right there. But you gotta have bait, so couple skipjack rods, couple different types of cast nets, plus everything else I got in the boat, you're ready to go catfishing. There's all different kinds of ways to catch these catfish. You can drag, I'm set up for that. I can suspend, I'm set up for that. I can do what is called a controlled suspended drift, where I set that trolling motor and have suspended baits down and cover a certain area that I wanna cover, maybe a channel edge. Sometimes you'll see me dragging and suspend baiting at the same time. Then of course there's bumping, which I do the least of in this area because you need a lot of current for that. And in this section of the Tennessee River, we don't get much of that. But I am prepared in case that happens. As far as these demon dragon type of floats, uh, the reason I prefer those over just buying a cheaper peg float is those cheaper peg floats tear up on you every two or three fish and you're having to take the float off, put a different float on. It just got to be aggravating, always changing those floats out. These things here, they never tear up, you know. Guys say, aren't you worried about a fish pulling these loose? Well, these are fish lures. I mean, they're a suspended floating fish lure with a rattle on it, so, uh, I mean, you know. They catch big fish with the hooks attached to these, you know, they catch 40 pound striped bass and current on these type of lures. So I'd say they're fine for catfishing. I've got my drag set, so I've never had a problem tying directly to the loops of those things. On my anchor fishing rods, I do have mono on those uh, and I am using a Dakota as well, but a much larger size. When you're anchor fishing, your lines are pretty much on the bottom and mono will take a beating, has a little more abrasion resistance and uh, it's easy to change, you know. With the dragging rig, I'm using the smaller Dakota with braid, but when I'm dragging, this braid almost never comes in contact with the bottom because this dragon weight stands up and then of course this floats up. My line almost never comes across the bottom. People say that the braided line is too expensive, but I look at it like this. 
I've used mono and I use braid. I have to change that mono out at least four times a year. Just being out in the sun and in the water and all that, you'll see it start getting milky looking. It is degrading fast. This braided line, I've left on my reels for two years. It may lose some of its color, but the strength is still there. So you're only replacing this every two years. I'll replace that mono eight times in two years. I would say the braid is the same price or actually a little cheaper if you look at it that way. On my TFR suspended rods, even though this line doesn't really come in contact with the bottom much because I'm suspend baiting, the reason I'm using mono is because these rods have so much backbone to them. Basically, you need a little give somewhere. And as stiff as these rods are with braid, it, it's, it's, it's a little too stiff. So I've actually got mono on my stiffer rods. The braid works well on the chasing cat rod because it does have a softer tip. If you run braided line when you're dragging on a much stiffer rod like the TFR or those Mad Cats carvings, you can actually miss fish because it's just too quick of a hook set for that circle hook to operate properly. So the reason I'm getting away with dragging with braid on these chasing cat rods is because there is plenty of flex in the tip. There's my gear for 2024. I expect it to be a good year. Had some requests from people to do this kind of video, so here it is. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Catfish Dave with another one, signing out.